Don't just sit there. Get involved. This is a Rebels Cause Radio. Oh, this is a Rebels Cause Radio. I am your host, Dan Fry. Uh, if I feel like I just don't have any energy, it's because people on the chat just, they can't help but be a John Wedgworth. And I already have a John Wedgworth, Benji. I don't, I don't need, nor do I want another John Wedgworth in my life. In fact, in fact, I refuse to, to, to get another one in my life. Yes, I know it's Westminster. I always mess that up. It's a bad habit I had. And you knew what I meant, so it didn't really take away from what I was saying. But I'm glad that people like John are so upset about it that that it'll derail an entire conversation because somebody uh, pronounced a word wrong or added a syllable to a word in that case, or you know, aren't quite as eloquent. Or uh, uh, what what other words should I use here, John? Eloquent, articulate, uh, articulate. You know, precise, precise. Yeah, uh, as them. Christians, guys, kill me. So, uh, chapter 21 of the Westminster Confession of Faith uh, is entitled, Of Religious Worship and the Sabbath Day. Uh, Point one is, The light of nature showeth that there is a God who hath lordship and sovereignty over all, is good, and doeth good unto all and is therefore to be feared, loved, praised, called upon, trusted in, and served with all the heart, with all the soul, and with all the might. But the acceptable way of worshiping the true God is instituted by himself, and so limited by his own revealed will, that that he may not be worshiped according to the imaginations and devices of men, or the suggestions of Satan under any visible representation." or any other way not prescribed in the Holy, Spi- uh, Holy Scripture. So there's the regulative principle that we would affirm of uh, uh, worship. Uh, religious worship is to be given to God, God the Father, and the Son. Or given, uh, religious worship is to be given to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and to Him alone, not angels, saints, or any other creature, since the fall, uh, not, uh, since the fall not without a mediator, nor nor in the mediation of any other but Christ alone. Uh, so that is how reli- uh, worship can be done. Uh, so that's that's important. Uh, and so we're talking uh, true worship here, which is part of the Sabbath. It's germane. I know some of you are going, oh, you just started reading about how to worship on the Sabbath. Uh, so uh, I'm trying to find this part that particularly deals with it. John, do you have that brought up? Uh, yeah, it's... Um it's subsection seven, uh, and primarily subsection eight. I was just going to read all of them, but I started. That's looking at, really long. Yeah, I started looking at it and go. That's eh, not that exciting. So someone tuning in, someone tuning in oh. on Saturday, halfway through the show, here's this. Yeah. Haphazard narration. Well, I mean, it's you gotta you gotta look at the whole, like how the how the Westminster uh, defines worship, though I think plays into how they define the Sabbath day. And so I don't think the two are unconnected, but for no, brevity, I don't think it's I don't think it's disconnected either. In fact, the fact that they're in the same chapter yeah. shows its connection. Yeah. So, but for brevity's sake, let's go to seven. Since you got it brought up, I just got it up. But you go ahead. You've had it for a while. Okay. Uh, and again, eight's the one that's really the most important. But seven kind of sets the stage. All right. Let's for eight. Let's, let's do that. So okay. So seven is as is the law of nature that in general a due proportion of time be set apart for the worship of God. So in his word, by a positive moral and perpetual commandment binding all men in all ages, he hath particularly appointed one day in seven for a Sabbath to be kept holy unto him, which from the beginning of the world to the resurrection of Christ was the last day of the week, and from the resurrection of Christ was changed to the first day of the week, which in Scripture is called the Lord's Day, and it is to be continued to the end of the world as the Christian Sabbath. Uh, Section 8. This Sabbath is then kept holy unto the Lord when men, after a due preparing of their hearts and ordering of their common affairs beforehand, do not only observe a holy rest all the day from their own works, words, and thoughts about their worldly employments and recreations, but also are taken up the whole time in the public and private exercises of worship and in the duties of necessity and mercy. And necessity and mercy there, there's a huge caveat. Well, and you know, one of the things uh, I think a lot of times when we're talking about our Sabbath rest, uh, I, I don't think we're we're resting properly. I mean, because one of the things uh, that it says that I thought was kind of 
interesting uh, to at least, at least from the, the, from the, insofar as I agree. Now understand that where I take an exemption from the confession is right there. So, so there's only so far I go with this anyway, whereas you don't take an exemption. Well, I, you know, um, I've been a lot looser when it comes to the recreation part of it, because the recreation part of that is, uh, is based on Isaiah 58, uh, 13 and 14. And I don't have, I don't have, I've got that brought up. You want to, no, I have it pulled up here in English. Um, and I, and I have it, I, I don't have it pulled up in Hebrew and I don't read Hebrew. So every, all my Hebrew, I have to beg, borrow or steal from someone's commentaries. But anyway, but the, the word for in, in the ESV and the, and the, the notations, uh, it actually says uh, that the uh, Hebrew word for pleasure here could mean business. So, so here's here's what it says: If you turn back your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not not going your own ways, or seeking your own pleasure, or talking idly, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I shall make you ride on the heights of the earth. I will feed. Uh, I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And so, I again, there's there's two interpretations here, and and not being this is this is why it would be handy to be a student of uh, of to actually know Greek and Hebrew. Yeah. We, only knowing English really cobbles us, you know, yeah. or really or really hobble, hobbles. Because depending on how you take this, uh, merely doing business or pursuing your own business is a uh, the other mention of pleasure. Uh, that that kind of skews that that scripture text for it, uh, and I know the King James has a different understanding. What's what's the King James say on that? Uh, I just have the NASB pulled up here. I can switch to the King James real quick. So I I mean, but this is a debate that's been going on. What's acceptable? What what's what's called a, you know, what's an act of mercy? What's an act of uh, necessity? Well, that's that's what it comes. And down what's to. recreation? Well, rec- Well, you you did some research into the recreation thing, wasn't there? Wasn't the whole thing about recreation uh, an objection to the book of sport? Yeah. Okay. So at one point, and I'm not an expert on this, so I'm not going to try to get into councils or or dates or or committees that form this. But uh, my understanding is the Westminster uh, objects. Uh, to uh, is kind of written, and you got to remember. Okay, all these things are responses. the The doctrine formed out of the Reformation is basically responses to Catholic doctrine or doctrines coming from other churches, right? So, so we we both agree that's kind of the case. So, what happened is, in my understanding, and this is per uh, my pastor who I trust, uh, uh, having done the research, not myself. So, so I, I will give that caveat right off the bat that this is Wayne's. Uh, this is a paraphrase of what Wayne said to me about it, and I, in, insofar as I read up on it, it sounded right. Uh, the response was that the Church of England was forcing people to participate in athletic sports on Sunday as part of kind of the Sabbath day. Hmm. And so uh, there was a book called The Book of Sport, and it was a, it was a, a prescription for athletics and, and, and kind of recre- forced recreation. And so to free people from that, the Westminster uh, uh, divines went ahead and, and added that in there. Is my understanding that makes a lot of sense? I don't see it. Even even if I, I Isaiah is not extremely uh, clear to me, especially when we have kind of that 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 cobbling of words. I, you know, first of all, we have the context of who Isaiah is written to. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and I, without being, I don't. I want to. Don't want to be divisive. I don't want to take apart scripture. But but I don't want to ignore context of who it's being written to and for the purpose it's being written and what the Sabbath means versus what the Lord's Day means. You know, there's some distinctions there as well. Uh, I thought well, distinctions in the Lord's Day versus the Sabbath. As far as uh, as far as what you're allowed to do. So so I mean that we got to. Well, you uh, not all okay. Yeah, not all the. Not all the ceremonial laws. The ceremonial laws of the Old Testament Sabbath were were fulfilled in Christ. Uh, the civil laws don't apply because we're not living in Israel. But the moral law of the Sabbath continues. Well, on. but okay. So let's talk about the the disciples walking amongst wheat fields, taking wheat, and it ah, being an objection. Ah, that was a. I, I don't. I don't believe that is a, a a law from the Mosaic law. I don't think that's one of the six thirteen. I think that's one of the. Uh, the uh, Pharisaical additions to the law. Now you have to understand the Pharisee, the Pharisees' additions. Well, hey, hold on, let me finish this. The the Pharisees' additions to the laws uh, actually were 
there, there actually was sound motivation behind him. Now, I'm not sure. I'm, no, I, I, we've the motivation, we've the had mo- that conversation. Yeah, the motivation is worse. Th- their frame of mind is we so don't want to transgress God's law that we're going to put our law in front of it. And as long as we don't transgress our own law, then we won't come anywhere near that electric fence of God's law. That's kind of the idea. Um, now, I mean, of course, it was con- it was condemned, so I'm not suggesting we do that, but um, that was kind of the idea behind it. So there was all these other laws added on top of the 613, and I believe that I, I'm not aware of any instance where um, where Jesus or his disciples and the Pharisees butting heads over the Sabbath laws were dealing with Mosaic biblical law. They well, were Jesus dealing with, healed on the Sabbath as an act. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, they're butting heads over it. Yeah, but where is the command not to heal? Well, you would have to have had somebody that was capable of healing first. Well, okay, my point is this. I mean, I don't see... I mean, I'm kind of playing devil's advocate here, because I'm not not really... I don't really necessarily disagree, but somebody's got to take the opposing view, right? Sure, sure, sure. Might as well be the tattooed guy in the Duck Dynasty shirt. And not the guy in the Atari TV shirt? Yeah, no. (laughs) Okay. Um, I derailed you. Go ahead. You did. You totally derailed me. (laughs) Um, You pulled up the King James. What's the King James say? Oh, I yeah, I did. Uh, Let's see here. Do 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 do. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, this by the way is going to be Brian Peterson's or Brian Peters' favorite part of the episode. Um, If thou if thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Well, it uses pleasure, too. Ah, Brian's on the chat. I know, <laughs> I know. I saw him on the chat. I'm going to ignore Brian. Brian can call in if he wants to join the conversation, but I will disregard his uh, his chatting on our chat. So so as we're talking about this, uh, you know, we, we've got to, we've kind of got to agree here uh, that the uh, the motivation to talk about this is to find what best honors God. It's It's not... What gives the person? If you're if you're going with it, trying to seek freedom from worshiping God on Sunday, then you're going about it all wrong. the The motivation when we examine what what is due on the Sabbath has to be what best honors God, centered around Christ. Everything from there will flow forward uh, in a good good way. Uh, when we come back from break, and I think we got what three minutes to break, one minute, one minute to break. Perfect. When we come back from break, uh, we're going to read the the original commandment, and uh, then we'll, t- we'll we'll probably read a little bit from the New Testament and kind of try to hash that again. Uh, I hope you guys, when you're listening to this, aren't John and I are working through this, and this is part of working through this. Uh, I'm putting out ideas. John is dismantling them or not dismantling them, depending on how good or bad the idea is. This is all acute, for me at least, this is all acute practical application. So, and Brian Peters is welcome to call in and voice his opinion. In fact, I think he's poultry if he doesn't. Yeah, I I think, I think he's a coward if he does not. Bovine? Yep. There you go. (laughs) Uh, This is a Rebels Cause Radio, and uh, besides harassing Brian Peters to get him to call on the phone, we do encourage you uh, to go ahead and uh, read your Bible. Uh, actually read it, know about it, read what's in it, study your Bible. Don't take uh, advice from silly guys with tattoos and, and goofy hats or bald men with uh, well, old he, video game t-shirts. Old video game t-shirts, yeah. Uh, love Jesus and forsake the world. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm administrative manager. I'm the senior technician. I'm service legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do, and if we guarantee it's gonna be a good experience for you, or else it's free, what type of work do you think we're gonna do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. 
Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you gonna say that to a client? No. <laughs> You don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're going to be listening. They're going to want to know what your challenges are. Then they're going to come and give you options, and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family. You know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it, because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now, and then leave, and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed the day. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me but is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did is perfect. It's great. <laughs> Keep going though. I like this. <laughs> just give us a try. I'm gonna take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed writer, it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. What do you want to do tonight? The same thing we do every night, Pinky. Try to take over the world. Don't just sit there. Get involved. This is a Rebels Cause Radio. All right, this is a Rebels Cause Radio. Uh, I am Dan Fry, the host of this show. Uh, if you like what you're hearing, you can hear us every Saturday night right here on 99.3 KTIA. Or, of course, uh, and I'm coming down with a little bit of cold, so my voice sounds a little weird to me. Um, but uh, you can also see us live Thursday nights at rebelscause.com. Uh, we have a chat, which is a lot of fun. Uh, you know, some days it's, we got 30 people on it. Some days, like today, we got 5, 10, something it's, like that. No, it's actually fairly lively today. We've had d nights where it was like three people on. Yeah, right? so so uh, in doing so, you get a chat with us. Uh, you get to participate in our, our program. Uh, today, tonight's kind of a weird program. Because we picked a topic uh, that we wanted to explore further, and so we're bouncing things off each other. So I, I want to put this out there that that uh, if you hear me or John say something that kind of sounds a little sketchy, that isn't necessarily a reflection of what we believe. It's it's trying to trying to kind of bounce ideas off and and test them with scripture and uh, and with the confessions of our church. Uh, and some of you guys aren't going to like that or immediately going to go, oh, scripture alone. Uh, the, the the confession is only useful insofar as it agrees with Scripture. Right, and there's there's no really no escaping it. I mean, uh, no creed but Christ is a creed. Yeah. So. so so and I did just get a phone call on air, and he's on speakerphone trying to end it. Um, <laughs> that hasn't happened in a long time, uh, but that doesn't normally happen. That's because so, we're too professional for that. We tonight is not the night for pre so let's bring on a professional. <sighs> okay. Let, let's let's bring on a guy. That, that, that not only like eats and breathes old English Bible language, but speaks it. Let's bring on Brian Peters. This Brian. Is like garlic. So basically, him speaking old English is basically like garlic breath, basically. Yeah, basically. Okay. How's it going, Brian? <laughs> it's going well with an introduction like that. <laughs> well, you, got, you know what? When you're not here, you don't get to choose your introductions. And when you're here, you don't, you don't get, get to choose, choose your introductions. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so it is. Uh, how, how are you doing? How's the uh, the world of pulpit supply? Uh, it's it's going well. Uh, things are are moving along, and uh, I just got done with another uh, semester of seminary. So, so I'm how much, happy to have finals and exams done. So, how how much more do you got left of that? Cool. <laughs> that is the uh, the big question, isn't it? I have no clue right now. Yeah, we're getting ready to round out our first year, and. Uh, Looking at how much content we have ahead of us, I realized I've I'm still got four years of a four year program ahead of me almost. I mean, and we've done a lot. It's just 
the 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 pace is outstanding. So uh, and we took some of the summer off and stuff like that, and that really held us back. So we're probably three and a half years out at least. It was tough. So so anyway, Brian, we are talking about the Sabbath, uh, and to kind of give those listening and yourself kind of a uh, context. And I don't know if you were listening or not. Don't say because it'll just ruin this whole segue. Uh, but. But John was was let go from a certain parcel delivery service that that is a, a part of the U.S. government, and, and uh, he was let go because he did not want to work on Sunday. Now that may or may not be the official reason they come back with, but but that is the that is what John John's claim is. Well, what it's what it's not just my claim; it's the truth. Well, I agree with you. I agree. I agree that you're that, that that's what you believe to be the truth. Yeah. Yeah. No. I um. I. I, I told them I couldn't. I told them during the interview I couldn't work Sundays, uh, for religious reasons. They said that'd be fine. Saturday I get a call saying, "Hey, show up Sunday." I said, "Nope." Uh, they said, "You don't. You're fired." I didn't show up to prove that. I mean, I didn't show up, and I proved that I meant what I said. And then they let me go, proving they meant what they said. And that's kind of the story. Now the um, the termination letter actually has a different reason that's unsubstantiated. Well, we, we don't. We don't need to get into that. I don't. I don't think that's germane. But the, but what 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 the effect was. Was John realized he wasn't as tight on his uh, sabotology as he would have liked? Well, I just you know I, I I'm finding myself really tight on uh, on the no working on Sunday thing. I find myself kind of in the middle when it comes to doing business. Like I don't do it trivial. I I don't just go out and you know catch a movie or I don't just you know hey let's just go to the mall you know. Um, but it's getting easier and easier to call something necessity. Or charity when when I wouldn't have done that before. You know, it's like, well, if we didn't have this ingredient before, we would just enjoy dinner without the ingredient. You know, sure. um, now it's like, well, we have to have this ingredient while we're there. Let's pick up this, this, and this, and this. And, you know, and so it's just getting easier to do it but that way. Maybe you should have just not had. You should have had macaroni and cheese that night well, instead of cooking the meal. Well, and have then you thought about that. Yeah, and I have. And then um, during my private time, I'm a pra- almost a practicing dominical. You know, it's like. If I you know, was Catholic, I would just get you saying some Hail Marys. We'd be good. Yeah, I just, you you know, squandering time on the internet, you know, maybe firing up a video game, you know, the football's on, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's just, I've really been, it's I'm really kind of inconsistent with my sabotology, you know, really inconsistent. And is it is this a is this a clarion call to move all the way back over to the strict side and everything? Um, maybe not. Maybe so, maybe not. I'm, I'm not... I'm I'm not sure that it is, but whatever it is, it's a call for me to re-examine my practice of the Lord's Day, my understanding of it doctrinally, and and b- develop a consistency. E- whether it's here in the spectrum, whether it's here in the spectrum, it's not going to be here. But you know, wh- wherever it is in the spectrum, you know, we're on the radio, right? So it, we also have a webcast, so the but, people on Thursday, but, but the people on Saturday, yeah, have, and the people on they the, have the, no the idea. People, so you just it's Saturday. here, it's here. It's not here. Yeah, yeah, the people on Saturday can use their their They'll have to mental use their, image. John, John was moving his. Let me let me let me. You know what? That to do mental images, you have to have a commentator. So let me commentate what just happened. John was moving his arms to signify that it was here, and then he moved it to towards the center of himself. That it was here, and then he moved it kind of towards the far left of himself, and said, "But not here." So so just those on mental images, John. Now speaking of mental images and. Uh, that's this is actually not a segue at all. Uh, one of the things we did earlier was you read uh, from the Westminster uh, Confession, and it struck me as kind of maybe we should read uh, first of all the, the the commandment concerning the Sabbath to see a that it is in agreement uh, with Westminster and its requirements, and and of course obviously we're going to have to systematically draw from Scripture. Brian's going to be the guy that knows all the Scripture, so we'll turn that section over to him. So, but just let the garlic breath. Yeah, just let him go. But uh, here, here is here is the the commandment: Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work: you, your son, your daughter, your male servant or your female servant, your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath and has made it holy. So, so it's it's one of the big ones. It's one of the ten, you know. It's one of the ones we like to throw away. Even Christians, particularly non Christians, but even Christians, we like to throw this away. So, so it's not. I think we should conclude for sure that it's not something that we should just be ignorant on how we treat this day. Well, it's something that we don't see abrogated in the New Testament. So, so, so. Okay, so, so, uh, Brian, one of the questions came up is, what's the difference between the Lord's Day and the Sabbath? 
And I, I just assume you have a ready answer for that. Totally prepared, maybe dissertation on that. <laughs> well, I think you uh, read a little earlier in the program, um, the Lord's Day is the Christian Sabbath. Um, yes, but reading, yeah. the, reading the paper Pope, as it were... <laughs> Wait, um, now you're now you're undermining the the authority that we've just been appealing to this whole time. Well, but I'm not appealing to this. I'm appealing appealing to this authority insofar as it agrees with Scripture. That is always the caveat in which I will read the Westminster. Well, yes, yes. And if I want to call it Westminster, I will. <laughs> but but uh, but the, I see in the commandment less of a command than in the, in the Westminster. So so what I would like to see is if we could show how that transitions into the Lord's Day. I think that would be helpful for others, other than to go to the Westminster, uh, precisely where in Scripture do we see that transition, Brian? Sure. So you don't find the explicit term, the uh, the Christian Sabbath. Um, you, like with a lot of things, like we would agree with infant baptism, uh, you're not always going to find that explicit verse which states out and says, the first day of the week is now the Christian Sabbath uh, under Christ. However, I think that you do find everything that leads you to that conclusion from good and necessary consequence. And basically, uh, what you're looking at is the fact that the Ten Commandments throughout Scripture are said to be a summary of the moral law of God. This is the law which Christ himself says... Hold on, Brian. You forgot what that music means? We're going to break. So, so, oh, there we go. Yeah, hold your thought. Hold your thought. I apparently have derailed the conversation long enough that we did not get Brian's whole thought in. This is a Rebels Guys Radio. When we come back uh, for the conversation, we'll uh, bring and we'll start back up with Brian, uh, Brian and the uh, the question we asked him. So, uh, we'll see you right after this break. Fry, host of a Rebels Cause Radio, and I'm here to ask you a question. Are you tired of being marketed a second-rate product at a first-rate price? Or perhaps more importantly, do you want to wear something that shows who you are, which is a Christian, but doesn't look silly or even worse, just theologically incorrect? I want to introduce you to Wrath and Grace Clothing. They're a company that wants to provide you with clothes that you actually like, prices you can afford, And most importantly, they offer a sound biblical message that represents who you are as a Christian. From the message presented in the graphics to the fit and finish, they have made their company on first-rate designs and high-quality fabrics and inks and offered at a price you can afford. Wrath and Grace Clothing, their mission is to proclaim the wrath and the grace of a sovereign God one shirt at a time. Go to wrathandgrace.com to check out all their designs. That's wrathandgrace.com. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. Get away from us, you mean old credit card. We don't have any more money. We're in trouble now. Save us! Help! Somebody save us! Somebody help! Hi, I'm Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of Des Moines. If your credit card's a little too animated, give us a call. Hooray, we're saved! Consumer Credit, you're our hero! I am the god of hellfire, and I bring you... These boys are on fire, and you're invited to come watch them burn. This is a Rebels Cause Radio. So in that bumper, I've never noticed it says, I am the God of Hellfire. Fire. You've never noticed that before? Never. There is no God but God. So I don't like, I wouldn't, I would not approve of that. He's, uh, he's taking a quote from uh, the opening of, the name I, of the song is Fire. I can't remember what 60s band I don't care what he's is. quoting. It's, that's horrible. Why, why would somebody claim to be a God? That's tisk 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 i uh, i really haven't heard that that's the first time i've ever found that so brian one of the que- the question we kind of asked you is how do how do we systematically uh go from the sabbath being uh saturday the last day of the week uh suddenly to sunday the first day of the week in the uh in the ancient calendar sure so uh 
As I was saying, the, the first thing you have to anchor everything in is the idea that the Ten Commandments are a summary of the moral law of God. And historically, within uh, with the Westminster Confession, for instance, you have this threefold division. When you read the Old Testament, you see that there are categories of law, that there are these judicial or these civil laws which are applicable to Israel as a, as a body politic, as a political body. These are things which, uh, as they're applicable to Israel, they expire. So some might take something along the lines of um, the cities of refuge. There's some debate about that. But here are things that are particular to the geographic context, to the political situation of Israel that don't necessarily have principles that extend to the modern day. There are ceremonial laws uh, that typify the holiness and point forward to the coming of the Messiah to come. But then at the core, there's this moral law of God which does not change from age to age. And historically, Reformed and Presbyterian types have looked to the Ten Commandments as not being ceremonial or civil and judicial, but this being a summary of the fundamental basic moral law of God. So that when you read the Fourth Commandment, this is not simply something for Old Testament Israel, but this is something which is obligatory upon people in all ages. So let me ask a question, though. So, so, so in regards... Uh, to the entire uh, the entire uh, content of the Ten Commandments, do they all fall under that that third category, that that timeless for all ages category? Yeah, all all Ten Commandments are okay. the, a summary of them. So, so it's not God. it's not just the fourth. It's these are these are commandments we cannot do away with. Correct. Okay. Yeah. For okay. One through ten. That's the historic reformed approach. What, what if we I count think. them as eleven, Brian? Well, then you would be wrong, Dan. No, I, I don't. I'm not. There's a there's a significant debate on that. On eleven. Yep, on being eleven. It's the way you split them up. You know, you know, the, like the Lutherans split them up differently than us. Right, but they still have ten. Yeah, I know, but that's because they combine two. So yeah. there, there's actually a significant de- debate that they're right to split the other ones up, uh, but wrong to combine the two. So. It, we were studying it in some areas. Pretty fascinating stuff. So, so, so there may be eleven. I'm not really overly bothered if somebody wants to count an eleven. I, it doesn't really. It's the Spinal Tap uh, set of commandments. This one goes to eleven. <laughs> yeah. Well, if somebody wants to split up the coveting, I it doesn't really because God is commanding those things. So, so whether you want to count it as one overarching command, command, or you can't do this, you can't do this. That doesn't affect what God said there, and so that doesn't that doesn't affect me. I actually uh, am more offended by the combining of the first and second commandments than I would be the same. So, so, yeah. so, so yeah. The, but there's there's actually an argument of some people that would make the case that the Lutherans had the splitting up right and the combining wrong. Uh, you know, whatever. I the the, mm. the the number of the commandments isn't uh, important as as much as, as important as how many or the the words of God being present there or the the unadulterated word of God there. So, I mean, we, we added the numbers, we added the pages, we added the little, sure. you know, in, in the ESV especially, it's got a lot of these, like, uh, you know, little kind of uh, titles for the paragraphs that you're reading. Those are added. Those aren't the Word of God. Those are just uh, what what that chapter or uh, section's about. So, so anyway, yep. uh, back to your back to your thing. So, so these are all considered timeless laws of God. All right, so so let's 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 make the jump now. How do how do we how do we do away with the Sabbath uh, and turn it into the Lord's Day? Okay, so you have to look at the character of the Sabbath as you've already been doing for a bit, okay, and understand what it is. Sure, um, it is a day set apart for worship, for uh, set apart for worship and reflection on God. Is that a good summary? Okay. Yeah, and real quick, I'm going to have to jump back for a second here because okay. I was trying to remember it and I found it. Uh, Exodus thirty four twenty eight does speak of the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Say that again. Uh, Exodus thirty four twenty eight does speak of the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Okay, and uh, in is is that in the uh, original Hebrew that 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 word ten is clear? Yeah, uh, that's my understanding because I remember you know you have the term Decalogue and it's the ten words. So I think the I think at least historically. Um, there hasn't been a lot of debate on on the number of the commandments because it's actually present in Exodus. 
Well, it doesn't. Either way, it doesn't really bother me. Decalogue is Greek, though, yep. isn't it? But still, I mean, that's if even if that's from right. the Septuagint, that's still going to be in it, the Tanakh. It, again, I'm more concerned with somebody that would take away. Uh, I I do think there's a. I mean, going to a Lutheran grade school, there there's some significant things that happen. We've got like two minutes, so we need Brian to finish up. So <laughs> so how do we make the jump, Lord's Day? So we we've observed that what the Sabbath right. is about. Now we're at the. How did we get to the Christian selected uh, Sunday as Lord's Day? Right. So we only have two options. If the if the fourth commandment is the moral law of God, you've got two options. Either you're going to say that it continues to be the seventh day of the week, or you're going to say that the seventh and the fourth commandment isn't delineating the last day of the week, but it's the seventh of the days of the week, which is historically the position that Reformed and Presbyterians have taken on this passage to say that the seventh is the period of time and not the last or the first necessarily. Then you have to look at the Old Testament and you see throughout the Old Testament, this is a day of rest for a purpose. It is a day of rest for holy convocation. That's generally the translation that's used. And throughout the Old Testament, the Sabbath is not just a day of stopping work, but it is a day like Isaiah 58 talks about in which you stop your own business, you stop your own pleasures for the purpose of coming together and meditating upon the words of God and his works and history and redemption and so forth. Then you look at the New Testament and you find out what has changed under Christ. Well, we have the old Sabbath delineating the uh, uh, act of creation and looking upon God's rest in creation, but we have a new creation now in Christ. And we also see in the New Testament a new pattern of holy convocation emerging. Now the New Testament church... Convocation, what's that word mean? Coming together, assembling, worship particularly. So you have... The New Covenant Church now, meeting together on the first day of the week, breaking bread, taking the sacraments, worshiping, praying, hearing Paul preach and speak to them. And this happens after the resurrection of Christ on the first day of the week. Okay, that's that's the answer. I mean, that, that's the best answer we've got anyway so far. That's all we were able to reason through. Uh, this is a Rebels Cause Radio. Uh, we are not doing a web-only web half hour uh, tonight because it's... Uh, freezing rain out here in Iowa, and we are trying to get home safely to our families. Uh, For those of you joining us on 99.3 KTIA, thank you very much. We will see you next week, uh, next Saturday at 6. Those of you on rebelscause.com, of course, Thursdays at uh, 8 o'clock Central Daylight Time. This is a Rebels Cause Radio.